everyone. I'm in the southernmost city of the planet, in Ushuaia, and the only thing further away is Antarctica and penguins. And that's where I suggest you come with me. You're on the Yang Bo Yang channel. Let's go! The continent that's the least traveled by man, where penguins are the real masters. Will you be my friend? Say hello. People are just guests. It's not easy to get here. There's a constant west wind. It creates waves up to 15 meters high. Any ship could meet the same fate as the Titanic. Please proceed to the emergency assembly point to which you are assigned. Seasickness got the better of me. And I saw the real Antarctica. The smell here, of course, is unbelievable. Bird feces mixed with fish odor. An unforgettable journey into a parallel reality. Here we go. Feels like a dream. I'm on a ship going to Antarctica. And the humans don't care, that's fine. Just when I started dreaming of snow and penguins, something goes wrong. The signal that has just sounded, consisting of seven short blasts and one long blast, is a general shipboard alert. Please take your life jacket from the Cayuca and proceed to that emergency assembly point to which you are assigned. Everyone milling about and handing out life jackets. As I ran downstairs, thoughts of the Titanic never left my mind, and I'm sure I wasn't the only one. Fortunately, it wasn't a real evacuation, but a drill, so that in case of emergency, everyone would know where to go and what to do. I sincerely hope we don't need it. There's also a whistle here. Yee. And there should be a tracker somewhere around here. Notice, yes, that it says Sea Spirit Madeira, which means it's a Portuguese ship. My mood now, in anticipation of exploring the seventh continent, is like this. The passage to the first landing will take about two days. We'll try to beat the weather, and if we don't, we'll face eight meter waves. Meanwhile, the guide jokingly fights off passengers who want to get there faster. If we go slowly, we will give out oars, of course. We'll set the sails, we'll make them. While we're at it, let's have a look at the layout of the boat. Oh, I've got it. I feel like I'm in a regular hotel, except it's rocking. There's a lot of boxes in the cabin, and they're mostly empty, except for this one. There's a lot of these different bags here. I don't know what they're for, and I hope I don't need them. There's a TV on board. Channel 1 shows today's schedule. Channel 2 shows movies, all in English. You can also watch documentaries, cartoons, and the route we're taking. But I know what you can go into withdrawal without on board an airliner. Internet. There is Wi-Fi on board. And surprisingly, it's completely free. 
But there is one nuance. It's satellite based, so it's very slow. And one session only lasts two hours. There are six decks on the ship. Passenger cabins are located on all but the lower deck. From the sixth to the second floor, you can go down the stairs. You can go back up by elevator. There's even a gymnasium, but it doesn't work when there's a strong rocking. On the second deck, there's a restaurant with three meals a day. We'll go there later, study the menu. There's also a bar with tea and coffee. It's open 24 hours a day. Of course, not everything on the ship is free. You'll have to pay for alcoholic beverages. In general, everything here is like a hotel. There's even a conference room and a library. And that's the state I'm in as I sail across the Drake Passage. I'm seasick, and the pills aren't working. Drake Passage is a dangerous place. It connects two oceans, the Pacific and the Atlantic. It's where the worst storms on the planet happen. That's because it's where the westerly wind constantly blows. And when it combines with the west to east current, it creates waves up to 15 meters high. So I'm on the most dangerous part of the course. It was even worse in the 17th century. Little people died here by the hundreds. Those who survived were given free whiskey and allowed to put a gold earring in their ear. In their ears. To be honest, I have no idea how many ships are buried here. There's a lot of ghost ships in the Drake Passage. In 1840, a whaling ship came across the schooner Jenny. All the bodies on board sat as if alive, but were frozen. And the captain's entry in his diary. May 4th, 1823. No food for 71 days. I'm the only one left alive. It's horrible. That's what they say about this strait. It could be Drake Lake or Drake Shake. I mean, it's a play on words. Either it's going to be calm and smooth or it's going to shake like hell. The winds in the strait can reach 126 kilometers an hour. And when you add to that the huge icebergs, it's easy to see why so many sailors have died here. Captain's log, day one. Today we're passing through Drake Passage. The water's actually relatively calm, but it's still pumping pretty hard. And all the talk on the ship, who's taken how many pills? Who's feeling okay? Now I understand why there are paper bags hanging at every turn. I'm sorry for the details. I used them. I found the only place on the ship that's more or less quiet. It's the tail section. I go outside and look at the horizon. I've been standing there for two hours just a little while ago. Walked in here and I'm starting to get motion sickness again. Even severe nausea can be tolerated to see the most unusual continent on the planet. In general, Antarctica has not always been a white crow among the continents. In ancient times, forests grew here and dinosaurs roamed. The climate began to change after the Earth collided with an asteroid. The dinosaurs became extinct. Speaking of extinct, recently there's been a near riot on the ship. Bye. We're not going to have a polar one. Everyone, uh, yes. Fuck. We're not cancelling anything under COVID. Just no camping, no swimming. It's a real shame, 
Polar camping is when you spend the night in a sleeping bag on one of the islands. And swimming is like this. Strapped with a tether, you jump into the icy water and then run into the hot hot tubs. Oh right, at least I got to try the hot tub. And hot tubs on a ship, isn't that the most romantic place? Centuries of ice, and you're sitting there, and you're warm, but... whales are most commonly seen in Antarctica. When they dive, they arch their backs. That's why they're called that. Before going ashore, you should be sure to check all your clothes, equipment, backpacks, items so that any extra seeds or soil will not get to Antarctica. Here, I'm going to check. I disinfect my feet in a special solution in Vircon. Everyone seems to follow the rules, but it doesn't always help. Recently, winter mosquitoes were discovered on the continent. They were obviously brought by polar explorers or tourists. Well, our first adventure is a Zadiag rat. A Zadiag is the kind of inflatable boat that will be used to take us ship to shore, or to get close to whales and icebergs. It was on Zadiags that the legendary Jacques-Yves Cousteau explored the oceans and filmed his movies. Also, you must wear you a mask wear in a the Zadiagi. You can only take it off on landings. On inflatables, a significant part of the trip takes place. You don't get to view wildlife from the heights of a big cruise ship, but one like this. Walk up to a whale and almost shake his flipper. My first landing on the land of Antarctica is about to take place. Me and Dame Point. Now you can definitely believe you're in Antarctica because there they are, the penguins. They're so cute. They're stoner. In some there room, are 18 there are species of penguins on Earth. Each they divide the territory as they go, like PG if in the 90s. Each island has its own gang. Damoy Point is home to these. the Papuans. Before each landing, you are definitely briefed. If you feel uncomfortable in the soft snow, bring your own hypo poles. In order for you to be more comfortable with yourself, you can make a big loop like this. Also, always tell you where you can go, what to see, and where the dangers lurk. But more on that later, because now, drum roll please. Here we are, the first steps onto the land of Antarctica. Let's go explore the island. We're guided by brightly colored tourist flags. They indicate the routes you can take. Remember the 
social distance because of the COVID, Antarctica has one too, but it's for the sake of the penguins. You can't go within five meters of them. It's that time when the fathers are incubating their chicks. Some have already hatched. But for the most part. But it's not the right time. And that father is hiding the chick right now so that, God forbid, it doesn't know the world yet. When penguins are not ordinary birds, unlike their relatives, they can stand upright because their leathery legs are located at the very end of their torso. Not every human can, especially after a bar. Antarctica covers 14 million square kilometers, and that's only a couple of million kilometers less than the planet Pluto. That's just outer space. And in all this gigantic territory, you won't find a single polar bear. It's a common myth that there are polar bears here. According to scientists, the bears simply didn't make it to the South Pole. They didn't want to or couldn't. Who knows? Is it habitable? Unexpected. But there's a museum on the Moy Point. It's an ordinary house where scientists used to live. Spam? More. It's actually very interesting. What is this? It's a workshop. And a lot of beds. The last time the polar explorers spent the night here was back in 1993. There's an opinion that when the polar explorers came out of here, it was just expensive for them to take everything out. And they said, oh, this is our heritage, we'll make a museum here. Pretty happy, actually. It's just some incredible emotions when a penguin in its natural environment not these horrible zoos, dolphinariums, oceanariums. The main rule is that you have to sit until you're allowed to stand up. Mandatory procedure and back again. Baby! The sea of experiences makes you hungry as hell. Let's go eat. I'll show you what they feed us here. Our second landing in Antarctica is Kuberby Island. It is called the local Bali because of its popularity with tourists. It has the world's largest population of sub Antarctic. Every day the chefs offer a different meal. You just pick what you want. Greek salad, mussels, chicken chops. There's something for every taste. And of course dessert. The menu is very varied, and the service is like in a restaurant. landing in Antarctica is Kubervi Island. It's called the local Bali because of its popularity with tourists. It has the world's largest population of sub-Antarctic penguins, 5,000 pairs.
Subantarctic penguins even starred in movies with Jim Carrey. In the American comedy, Captain Krikun, Kusaka, Vanyuchka, Laskun, and Dunduk helped the hero to return his ex-wife. The filming involved the very real penguins, which were then put on graphics. Our house is getting cozier. Cooberville is not only rich in penguins, there's a lot of whale bones like this. They are about a hundred years old, and they have been here since the time when there was whaling. It's strictly forbidden to step on them, even to take them in your hands. They're the only ones allowed to walk on them. Whales were killed for food, for fuel. The meat was added to sausage, for example. And the bristles from their whiskers were used to stuff furniture. Sometimes up to 50 zero whales were killed in a season alone. The smell in here. It's of course just unbelievable. I don't even know what to compare it to. It's like, you know, when you smell poultry. Excrement mixed with fish odor. You can even see this feces from space. Scientists don't photograph them for fun. They photograph them for science. It's how they track populations. aren't afraid of humans because they know we pose no threat to them. It's just some big red creatures walking around. Hi, are we gonna be friends? No? But wildlife always stays that way. Just now, a bird grabbed a little penguin. The older penguins tried to save it, but they couldn't. And now it's right there with a dare that's painful to watch. It's a skua. There's a lot of them around here. On the one hand, they're only harmful eating penguins, but the instructors say they have their uses too. The skuas protect the flock from other predators. As you can see, the penguins are now inactive. The thing is, they're in their molting period, and during this period they can't swim, and consequently they can't eat. The molt lasts for several weeks. During this time, penguins lose up to 45% of their weight, eating only fat reserves. They itch all over their bodies. They can't scratch themselves. They have legs. Will you be my friend? Say hi. Say hello. Say hello, please. Yes. I don't go near you. I'm afraid of you. Penguins can't fly. Although scientists believe they could in ancient times, they just didn't need to. Why should they? They have no natural predators except skuas, which attack their chicks. So they feel completely at ease here and they use their wings as flippers. They're great divers. They can go up to 36 kilometers per hour in the water. That's the average speed of a motorboat. The amazing thing is that they're, they're such clumsy creatures, but on land. But when they're in the water, I think they swim better than fish. Scientists who always have to do something weird recently strapped a GoPro with a microphone to the penguins and they found that the birds are screaming underwater. But the human ear can't pick up these sounds. They're too short. But on land, their cries are perfectly audible. Penguins suffer from topographical cretinism, and when they return from hunting, they often can't remember where their nest is.
but they never forget the voice of their beloved. And so they scream as they try to find their nest. It's thought to resemble the mooing of a donkey. Does it sound like that? Well, sort of. Sitting in the zodiacs, you can read the icebergs. It's like coffee grounds. Nose, mouth, forehead. I love Paslo. Antarctica, Ukrainian borscht, yes, Ukrainian. Anyway, everyone forgot about dinner, because here surrounded just whales. There are a lot of them. There's one there, one here, one there, two there. And everyone is waiting for them now. What dinner? What's that for? All right, well, give me the camera. I'll film them. I've never taken a camera away from a cameraman, but with four whales swimming around you, it's nerve-wracking. We're... Decided to get close to them on the zodiacs. You can't get too close. As the instructors say, we're guests here. And be sure to turn off the motor. After dinner and whales, I decided to go to the captain's bridge. Usually it's open to tourists, but not in COVID times. We still haven't even seen the captain here. The whole crew is just isolated from the passengers. See, it says red right there. Red, red zone. Under no circumstances should you ever go in there. Uh-oh. Hi, can you come to the... The river? I, uh, I can't tell you what's possible, what's impossible, but I know what's impossible because we have a COVID steering wheel and there's a camera on the bridge. They do it on the record. Ah, uh, you speak Russian so well. Well, I understand from Poland. You can always go up to the captain and tell him. What does he look like? He's so much bigger than me. He, he looks like a captain. Wonderful. Amazing. Genius. Well, I tried. It didn't work, but look what a nice man he is. He's a real sweetheart. There's a reason they're afraid of COVID's here. If you test positive, the only way you'll see Antarctica is from your cabin. There are people like that on this ship. They've been waiting two years for this cruise. They've been saving up, just getting ready. And it's such a bummer. So, Zhenya, Roma, hold on. Of course, you can't see much through the porthole. Do you know what's going to happen any minute now? My first continental landing in Antarctica. So my foot will not be on an island as before, but part of a continent. Remember those school maps? It always looked like Antarctica wasn't that big a continent. In fact, in its entirety, it looks like this. Antarctica is about twice the size of Australia. Moreover, its extreme point is at a latitude of 63 degrees. In the same latitudes, 
only in the northern hemisphere are located Icelandic Reykjavik and Russian Arkhangelsk. And if suddenly Antarctica moved to the north, it would cover Scandinavia, Russia, Canada, and even reach the United States. That's how big it is, this white continent. There you see they take pictures. And here they take pictures with the sign of the seventh continent. That you're on Antarctica. Oh, cool, that's it. That's Neck Bay. It doesn't have a very good name. It's named after a Scottish whaling ship that fished here in the early 20th century. And then there are sea elephants. Here's one in person. Well, one. It's a female. Oh, she's sleeping so sweetly. I want to scratch her behind the ear. You can't go near her because she's... It's a dangerous animal. It can crush you with its weight. They're not penguins. The sea elephant is one of the largest mammals on our planet. They weigh up to four tons. But this female hasn't grown up yet. She's only a year old. I'm sure you're all familiar with the Zdun meme. It's actually a sea elephant. It's just male. This is just the female up. gender. That's why there's no nose. If we were to now... We saw a young male here. He already had a trunk. My condition after my foot first set foot on Antarctica. Sleep and dreamt of seals. Sighting. The second route to the seal, right there, behind you. If you're going to the seal, please follow the flags only. Because the ice on the isthmus has already washed up pretty badly. With snow. And there are big cracks. I didn't dream about them. We're about to see them. This is our second continental landing. We're in Portal Point, where the Weddell seals are. Seen, uh, hey dude, penguins don't want to be friends with me, but will you? I'm like, yeah, I will. These guys got their moment of fame. Turns out they can stay underwater for an hour. Look, here comes tennis. Oh, he's so handsome, he's so handsome. The females of Weddell seals are bigger and thicker than the males, which is unusual in the wild. There's such a commotion around him, and he doesn't even move. He's a seal. A layer of subcutaneous fat in these animals can reach a third of the body weight. This keeps them warm in harsh climates. Although I can't say it's freezing today, I've always associated Antarctica with cold. Look at me. I'm free. I'm walking around without gloves. It's probably about five degrees here right now. And that's what Antarctic summer is like. Few people know that this land is considered a desert. And that's not a mistake. The fact is that a desert is a place where less than 254 millimeters of precipitation falls per year. In Antarctica, only about 50. The seventh continent has other records, for example, temperature records. In winter, the temperature here is minus 30 degrees, but the lowest temperature that has been recorded is minus 89 and 2. And also, the winds can accelerate to 60 meters per second. All in all, it's an extreme place. Antarctica is a leader in iceberg production. The ice that breaks away from the continent gives 90% of all icebergs on the planet. And they come in some incredible shapes.
When a lot of adults gather in a snowy place, what do they do? That's right, they make a snowman. But Antarctica's rules say you can't make snowmen here. Found. A snowman. Now they're breaking it down. Now the Zodiacs will lead us to the wreck of the old whaling station. Yes, of course. Everything's preserved very well in this harsh environment. It's amazing. Wooden boats that are 100 years old lying around. This ship sank in 1914 after a fire. It's rusted through now, but you can still imagine what it used to be like. What a sickening sight. Sausages, wieners. Crab eaters actually eat small crustaceans. Why they're called that, nobody knows. They're crayfish eaters, that's what they are. On the way back, we take a photo as a souvenir. We stroke, I am not afraid of this word, an ice block. The instructors easily determine the age of the ice. This one is quite old because there are few bubbles in it. And finally we reach Deception. This is one of the most desirable islands for tourists. And it's famous because it was formed by a volcanic eruption. And beneath my feet now is frozen lava and volcanic sand. That's why Deception is called the Santorini of Antarctica. And we're in the caldera right now, so we're swimming right into the vortex of the volcano. This is the only place in the world where ships can enter the center of an active volcano. Think about it, an active volcano. The last eruptions here were very recent, in the 60s. Water's really warm. I think it's about a degree. Well, 35 degrees. And there's the smell of hydrogen sulfide. Rotten testicles. If you look closely, you'll see smoke. It's proof that the volcano's gone to pieces and may wake up soon. There's a lot of stars like this lying on the shore. I think they're boiled. After World War II, this was a British military base, then a laboratory. Now it just looks like the set of a movie. For some movie. What adds to the creepiness is that Deception used to be a whaling base. They used to hunt seals too, and this couple is loving it. They hit an old whaling boat. The seals were not afraid of people because they had never seen them before. Hunters came up close and hit them on the head with a paddle. Hopefully love will save them from extinction. And the seals seem to come here like a resort. In 1997, all deception workers were evacuated from the island because of a volcanic eruption. The station was never operational again. And the island looks like a horseshoe from up here. Look at this. This is the moment I've been dreading. I can see the sadness in your eyes that this is our last landing. 
and it will take place on Half Moon Island, which translates to Half Moon. You haven't seen a penguin in a while, have you? I'll get them for you. There are 90 zero pairs of Antarctic penguins on Half Moon. You know why penguins like to hang out together? It's how they warm up. Temperatures inside their boring groups can reach plus 35 degrees Celsius. Antarctica is easy to get to. You don't need a visa, you just need money. But drone photography is more complicated. To fly a drone in Antarctica, you just need a bunch of permits. And we got them. But one condition was that you need a float for the drone, which we didn't bring with us. So we had a little drone flying with a bottle like this. Believe me, it looks very epic. When the drone flies and the bottle follows it, it's like it's a bird. So give it a thumbs up for the idea. We're sailing back to Ushuaio. Each of us has fulfilled our dream of walking the seventh continent. But the reasons for that dream are different. How did you get the idea to come here? I had thoughts about Antarctica and the North Pole when my grandmother brought me as a child to the club of young sailors, rivermen and polar explorers. Vasily's grandfather, Mikhail Yakovlevich Bachkov, was a polar explorer, and he wintered twice on the seventh continent. Do you remember any story your grandfather told you? Well, in general, he was just describing his life at these stations, how they went to the bathhouse, and after the bathhouse they watched whales swimming in the ocean, how did your grandfather react that you were going to go to Antarctica? I even asked him if he would like to go himself. He is now in his 80s, and grandfather said that I would have been more than happy to go there a third time, but grandmother said only with her now. Grandfather Vasily went to Antarctica twice, and both times his wife waited for his weather. Apparently, on the third separation, she was not agreeable. And by and large, what I've seen now with my own eyes, well, it's not much different from what it was so many years ago. Well, what did Grandpa say? He said that, uh, he Russia... He said that he envied me immensely, that he would like to do the same. He said that let's take photos and videos of everything. We'll watch it with Grandma. You look at all this beauty and can hardly believe that it is not another planet, not another universe. It is just a continent of ice and snow, which lives by its own laws and rules. Antarctica was discovered by the Russians. It's a lot like us. James Cook got to the ice wall and decided there was no further to go. And the Russians are like, oh, wall, we've got to breach it. Yeah, it's definitely one of the most memorable trips of my life. If you liked it, put a like and leave a comment. And also subscribe to the channel, Young Wood Young Channel with you. And still you will miss places you haven't been to yet. Bye bye.